everybody all throughout the country has their own idea of hunting, whether it's a, you know, a ride in the back of a pickup truck down a forest road or a 10 day expedition into the mountains. There's just so many different types of hunting and uh, each one requires a different skill set. What we did in particular required a lot of physical strength, a lot of patience, and 17 llamas. I've always had an interest in hunting, but a year ago when I started working with Bo, uh, he really sparked my interest. So him and Marshall got tags for elks over in the Sawtooth, and at first I was jumping on board to get to know the process, to see it, kind of get behind the scenes and understand more about it. Uh, but pretty quickly I got wrapped up into it and bought a buck tag myself. And I did that through Idaho's passport system. So I've never hunted before. I shot a rifle a couple times, but I was beginner. I had almost zero knowledge on hunting and uh, the whole scene of it. So day before the hunt, right now we've got the rifles and we're putting a few rounds down range. I'm trying to get a bit more accurate, trying to get more comfortable with the rifle. So go ahead and chamber around. Go ahead and take it off safety. Perfect. Now you're live, and when you pull the trigger, it's gonna go down range like a million bucks. So just make sure to steady and pull that trigger with nice consistency, no jerky. Alex is a brown hair, brown eye, gangly, smiley guy. <laughs> um, our guests really love him. He's a really hard worker. You know, and I would say he's pretty a shy guy, um, somewhat reserved and very thoughtful and he processes everything in his life. So I'm feeling good about it at, at this point. Where are you at? How'd you like the gun? How do you feel about the shots? I feel pretty good. I feel like now uh, after this experience I can go in the field and I know how to better prepare myself to be able to put a couple couple rounds down. So okay. a lot more comfortable. So you feel totally comfortable at 100 yards? Yeah. And you like the gun? Oh yeah. Gun's accurate? Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and shoot a few more. Ideally, I want you to shoot at least five rounds at this distance, and then uh, we'll move to further distance. But so far, so good. So I'm feeling, I'm happier about your shooting than I thought I was going to be. So I have, I have really good confidence in your abilities if we can get this close to a deer. All right. All right? All right, cool. Go ahead and uh, set up. Let's do some more. I remember when we were first training Alex to be a llama guide, you know, there's a lot of new things to go through. But he wanted to experience them all, and he didn't want us to take any learning moments away from him. Even though they're hard and difficult, and he's training young and new llamas and learning himself, he didn't want us to make it any easier on him. He wanted us to let him go through all those experiences. And I think that there's a lot you can learn from Alex, and just being willing to take on and learn new experiences through life. He's one of those guys that truly enjoys the journey of life. We're at the ranch getting uh, all these small things ready. We're thinking about food prepping, throwing gear in the truck. Just generally excited about something new. Something I have no idea what I what to expect or how to even prepare for it besides listen to my buddies and take their work. So for this hunt, you know, we planned on basically six days of hunting and uh, which we thought would be ample enough time, especially if we got weather, to go in and try to find animals. And we took a full truck and trailer full of llamas, you know, uh, I think we had 12 llamas up there, full of water and gear. And we had a dry camp, so we had to bring in a significant amount of feed and water for the llamas and both ourselves. And then map finding and routing, you know, was logistically a pretty tough hunt. Uh, one of the tougher ones that I've ever done in my life. And so for a first time hunter, <laughs> To go on a logistically hard hunt was, uh, you know, added a little more pressure, I guess, and somewhat anxiety for both him and me. I'm gonna race you for taking what's mine. 
Right now we're prepping our llamas, getting all the gear ready. We're gonna feed them cookies, get them energized. We're brushing them, saddle them. We'll weigh out the pinners, make sure they're even, nice and balanced. Throw them on the llamas. And we got about nine miles to hike into camp. So it's about 12.30 at the moment. Hope to be at camp around maybe six or seven o'clock tonight. I feel like between the knowledge and what we do have packed already, we're in pretty good shape. Adapting is what has me a bit nervous. So as we're hiking through, the forest canopy covers the bottom of the river till you get about four miles in. And then it expands and opens up, and the views are just amazing. We entered the snow line, and by the time we got to the mountain, it was a full blizzard. Snow was coming down, the visibility was definitely cut. Throughout the season, uh, and I guess kind of my reputation precedes me with the guides, and the guys that get to know me a little better know that I really enjoy the fall. One, because we're pretty much done guiding for the season, and another reason is hunting season's here. And so my wife and our guides and employees, everyone knows that Bo, me, look forward to hunting season. So Alex knew uh, before meeting me that I really enjoyed hunting, and we got to know each other a little bit throughout the season, and he kind of just, well, he asked me questions, so he tell me a little bit about hunting. So I tell them, like, you know, the places we go, places like the Sawtooth, um, the Wind River, the Frank Church Wilderness, and just the location of where we went hunting really intrigued him. And at one point, he's like, you know, I'd really like to go and see these places. And then we talked a little bit more about the process of hunting and finding and locating game, harvesting the animal, bringing the meat home, feeding our families. And then he started, like, the wheels are turning in Alex's head. You know, he's really excited about it. And everything he was saying, I was writing down because I felt like everything he was talking about had importance to it. You know, he calls himself a red bearded redneck, but if he's a redneck, he's one of the most well put together rednecks I have ever met. He starts thinking about the self-reliance thing and providing food for himself. And as a vegetarian, I thought, you know, Alex is a vegetarian, I thought this is a really strange, crazy out there thing for a guy who's been off meat, you know, for six, seven years. And, you know, to think about going and hunting and killing something and then eating it. I was like, man, this is really cool. So I was like, you know what? Somebody like this would be a great ambassador for hunting, conservation, and a wonderful steward of the land which he already is, and I've seen that in him throughout the guiding season. So six years ago, I gave up hamburger, I gave up turkey. It was a slow process of me just continuing to respect myself and respect how I felt. And I noticed that the, the stuff I was eating at the time, it wasn't good. And I wasn't, I wasn't appreciating it and I didn't want to continue that lifestyle. So slowly I cut out all meats and I lived that for six years. Uh, since I was younger, the idea of self-sufficiency had always triumphed any of my other decisions. Uh, the, the idea of being totally dependent, of being able to harvest and collect my own food, outweighed you know, the, the remorse or the grief I had about being vegetarian. So I, I worked up to the idea of eating meat. And it was a very slow process. It took me six years to finally come back to terms with you know, the, the idea of grief and um, finding something that was going to make me happy. And then now I realized I wasn't enjoying meat before, 
because it wasn't as good as meat as I could harvest in the backcountry. Oh. It's uh, first morning in here. I'm feeling good. Snow stopped snowing. It's looking like it's getting blue skies. So I bet the deer are gonna start waking up here. Half hour, an hour, the llamas all just stood up. So we didn't want to move too far from camp because we don't know what's close to camp. So we got great vantage point. We can go ahead to and see what we can find. I'm pretty optimistic at this point still. It's really early in the trip. I feel like I got a lot of time left, but I'm pretty excited to try to get things going. Morale is high. Feeling pretty good with all the snow and the weather and the cold last night. What I would uh, before call wildlife viewing, hunters, I guess, refer to that as glassing, as they're looking for wildlife, suitable wildlife to hunt, whatever their permit and tags call for. So I kind of start close with my glassing and then I kind of move it out in a circular pattern. Glassing uh, is a lot of fun, but requires a lot of patience. And I remember being a couple days in and not seeing anything. Uh, I barely saw the tracks or the sights that any of these other guys saw. And I thought I, I was taught. I thought I knew the wildlife. I thought I knew how to uh, search and see tracks of what was living out there in the forest. But these guys came about spread a whole wealth of knowledge on me and gave me a whole new perception of the outdoors. She keeps looking to the right, keeps looking to the right. So there's something over here that she's curious about or wondering about. So we need to focus over there to the right, see if we can find the bar. Does that feel pretty comfortable, pretty steady? Yeah, I have to get it a bit more steady. Okay. I felt like I wanted to take a shot. Okay, well, prepare yourself to get ready to take a shot. Day two is a big day of glassing, trying to locate animals and, you know, kind of spreading out from camp. Now that around camp we hadn't seen very much, and so we really put on the miles and the distance on day two, but to no avail. And so day three, we're like, okay, this is the last area we feel like we can go into to try to locate deer. And right off the bat, we're glassing one of the points um, northwest of camp, and sure enough, we see a doe and a fawn and a small buck, right at, right at first light. And you're gonna to try to find him with your naked eye, reposition the gun and get on him. I do feel a little nervous. It's, it's quite the emotion, seeing the living animal, but I feel well prepared. I'm a little shaky, so the scope is, it's moving a bit, but I feel sturdy enough where I could take a shot right now if I had to. I could see everybody get worked up because we had waited for this moment and finally it was here. And I was holding the rifle, realizing, oh God, you know, this might be the only time, this might be the only shot we have up here. This, this is, I know, leading up to a pretty special moment and I, I can't miss. Let's do this. This is the moment where I started to connect with the animal and I started realizing with my finger on the trigger, this was the moment. This was when I was gonna take a life, something I'd never done before. So it, it took a minute, um, but with the guy's help, patiently just waiting <laughs> for me to line up and make, the, make a good shot. As soon as he turns broadside perfectly, Alex shoots. <laughs> and it was a perfect shot. Wait and keep yourself relaxed. Yeah, it gets a lot more personal when you can see, actually see the animal. Yeah. And you can see their eyes. You know, he didn't really know at that point what to say or what to do or how to feel. And so we kind of just glass the deer, watch him for a minute, kind of calm down from the heat of the hunt. And uh, once we're able to kind of verify that we pretty sure the deer was down. Uh, we collected all of our stuff and Alex was extremely anxious to get over there. He wanted to make sure the deer was dead and they made a lethal shot. And uh, that's really all at that point was, was on his mind. It's kind of hard to believe. Right now I feel like there's a lot going on. I don't have time to feel to check in with myself. I just want to finish this and follow through.
you got blood here, Alex, you see that? So yeah. I want you to track the blood and make sure you don't go to the next spot until you, don't leave your current spot until you find it the next spot, okay? Okay. And uh, Bo asked me, okay, where do you go next? And I saw tracks go uphill, so I immediately start going uphill. And uh, Bo just shakes his head, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm caught up in kind of all the commotion of it. And that's when I look downhill, and there's, there's the buck, just laying completely down on the ground. And that's when the realization really hit me. And I, 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 I felt myself break down. I definitely, I felt pretty bad killing something. And um, I started saying thank you to the animal, and that's where it really just poured out of me. I just started breaking down, crying, and it wasn't something of grief. It wasn't. It wasn't a feeling of you know, like devastation. It's more of I was thankful for the earth, and I can't believe that I live in an area where we have this, where we can go out and we can be self-sufficient. That there's life to keep to keep me going. There on the mountain, you know, a rush of emotions came over Alex. You know, that he had successfully taken the life of a mule deer. And uh, that he had killed something for the first time in his life. And, you know, watching him go through that process, I think all of us as hunters providers as we take an animal's life for the first time for our own benefit and need. Um, There's just a lot to take in. The whole experience gave me an array of emotion. It tested my patience. I learned something new. I created an experience with nature, with the guys who went out and taught me what they knew and with the mule deer itself. There were five days spent well in the backcountry, something where I'd see myself doing again. It's really good. It's chewy. All the season now, it goes down a lot easier. Yeah, not bad. Exciting. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Good enjoying the harvest, huh? Yeah. Make full use of it. Without public lands and without people to understand the importance of public lands and conservation of the animals that inhabit our public lands, you know, this experience would have been impossible for Alex. Public land has been something that's always been important to me. But after learning and seeing a different aspect of it, it's a critical resource to the American citizen. What it offers is almost infinite. It affects my career as a, as a guide. And it's not just me, it's everybody. If these public lands are swept up, we're not going to have these resources. We're not going to have these places of retreat. Alex and I were able to have a tremendous experience in a magnificent and magical place that hopefully his children and my children and their children and generations after us, just like all those before us, get to go and experience. <laughs>